Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for being here. So it seems like on YouTube, it's easy to keep trying to make a cooler and cooler build, you know, something bigger, better, and neater. And sometimes we just forget, you know, the basics of forging. What, is it, what does it take to forge a knife? In this video, we're gonna talk about forging a knife, getting the basics, doing it right. So I'm starting out with a quarter inch by one and one half inch piece of steel. And I'm starting by forging down one of the corners. And this is going to be the clip point on this particular blade or the spine of the blade near the tip. Now I have it flipped over and I'm gonna go ahead and forge in the entire point of this blade. And the thing that you always have to watch out for is uh, fish mouthing the end of your steel. To avoid that, you have to use sort of glancing or uh, on-end blows and you know hitting the very end of your steel is kind of hard because you're, you're holding your steel instead of the anvil but you can see here how I'm holding it and it's uh, it takes a little more time but it's effective and you can knock that uh, fish mouth back in and not get that uh, cold shut at the end of your steel and you, end of your blade certainly don't want that that will give you a bit of a problem on the finished product. So I'm forging in this clip point here and I will point out that this is not the only way to forge a blade but there are a lot of similarities to you know a lot of these things are going to be the same no matter how you do it. So once I forge in my clip point here at the point of the tip of the blade I'm going to go ahead and start forging out the bevel near the end of the blade. So you'll see that the edge is starting to curve around and the way I'm going to uh, compensate for that is by hammering along the spine and also doing a little bit of straightening as you see there. This is different than the method where you um, forge a curve in the blade the wrong direction before forging in the bevel. What that does is spreads the steel out of one side of the blade and uh, re-straightens the knife. In this case, I'm going to be forging on both sides of the blade, uh, on the spine and the edge, unequally of course, but close enough to where we can keep the blade pretty straight and then simply tapping it, you know, tapping uh, bends down, just straightening it out on the anvil is not a big deal. Now this is actually a pretty decent way to do it because, or especially if you're doing a distal taper where the spine of the blade, starting at the handle, gets narrower and narrower towards the tip that's a distal taper and I typically always use a distal taper on my knives depending on sometimes I don't if I want to keep more weight of the blade like a big chopper blade something like that but most of the time I use a distal taper and that's handy in this case like I was just saying because it allows us to keep the blade straight by forging somewhat the same amount on both sides of the blade so refining the tip here, kind of going for the getting the shape that I want. And as long as you don't go too thin, you you can uh, forge the you know on edge. And uh, you know as long as you're careful and not to curl it over one side or the other. So I want a little longer blade than what I had going there, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and forge out more of a bevel further up the the stock here. So one thing you don't want to do, no matter how you forge a blade, is start with the um, finished thickness of your blade. So if I'm going to forge a blade out to an eighth of an inch thick, I do not want to start with an eighth of an inch thick piece of steel. I want to start with something you know, at least, say, three sixteenths and um, maybe, maybe even more. If you start with something that's the thickness that you want to finish with, it's going to give you a lot of problems. You want to be able to forge out the profile and bevel, spread that steel out, so to speak, and uh, instead of trying to keep it uh, from mushrooming, mushrooming up on you on the edges as you forge down the, the tip and so forth. So here I'm using a uh, sort of a fullering tool, and I have it tipped forward the wrong direction, as you can see here. Uh, this would be remedied with a longer handle on that tool or flipping this whole assembly around which would require something or someone to hold the other end of it which I don't have. 
So that, uh, that operation I just did right there did not work as well as it should have for me. And done, did not result in the uh, quite the finger um, or ricasso area. It's not really a ricasso, but uh, where, you, where you hold it, right at the end of the handle there by the blade. So obviously that mushrooms it out a little bit. I'm just hammering that down and then straightening out the transition between the handle and the blade. The finished uh, length on this blade is going to be about seven and a half inches. So a, uh, a little bigger, a little bit bigger knife, like a small buoy, I guess. I didn't do a real heavy distal taper on this one, as I just was talking about a distal taper. On this particular one, it's a very slight distal taper because I wanted to leave more weight up uh, front so that it could be capable of a little more light chopping or something like that. And also you notice that the blade is a little wider towards the clip, which also puts a little more weight up front, whether or not you have a distal taper. So different ways to accomplish that in those design factors. So cutting off the, the knife from the piece of steel at the end of the handle, and you can see the handle piece is uh, much too short, but that's because I'm going to do a um, tapered tang on this. This is something else I like to do most of the time, unless I'm trying to balance out the weight of the blade, such as in a, or, um, like in a large knife, a larger knife, big knife. Not the case here. So we're gonna do a tapered tang. And several reasons I like tapered tangs is because it, uh, on, a, on a medium to smaller knife, it gives you a nice balance, but it also, saves material. So instead of uh, forging out the handle and then you know grinding out a fuller in the handle or even drilling holes in the handle to reduce weight or something like that, simply forge out a tapered tang and you've saved some steel and you don't have to do anything else to it except for put your pin or bolt holes in. So Forging this out here, you can see I'm using the heel of my hammer. And the reason for that is because that smaller surface area, you can see that right here, it's much more effective, more efficient. Uh, the same is true for the edge of your anvil. Uh, this particular anvil, the corners are pretty uh, beat up, so maybe not so much in this case, but most effective is when you use uh, one, the edge of your hammer, whether it's the toe, heel, or side in conjunction with the corner of your anvil. That is the most effective way to hand forge, uh, draw out steel, uh, and not the horn, as you see some people doing. So I'm trying to get a little better uh, drop edge uh, transition there. And uh, got a little bit more of that going on here. So before I finish the handle completely, I'm going to touch up the bevel on the blade a little more. I decided to make the blade a little wider. I still had some more stock. So how how thin do you want to forge the edge down to? Well, that depends on several different factors, but in this case, I'm going to about 3.30 seconds. And I think that's a, you could go thinner. Uh, on this particular steel, ADCRV2, it does decarburize decarburize quite badly compared to a lot of other steels. So I like to tend to leave a little more uh, thickness um, on the finished forged product prior to heat treating and grinding than I would on other steels. Anyway, the idea here is uh, the less grinding you have to do after the fact, the better. So forging that into close as possible to uh, finish dimensions while compensating for things like decarburization. That's what you want to do. So stamping my maker's mark in there. I actually had to hit it a couple of times to get the depth that I wanted. The spine thickness on this is about 3 16 
I wanted to go ahead and uh, widen the end of the handle a little bit more. This gives you a little better purchase on the grip, especially for things like chopping. Um, it disallows your hand from slipping off of it so easily. So I'm using my cross peen hammer here to just spread out that steel on the tang here. Some guys use, like to use this uh, in forging the actual bevel on the blade as well. I don't, but if you do, that's fine. Here I'm just uh, spheridizing the tang so that I can drill holes in the, in the, in the tang for the bolt, handle bolts. And uh, just bringing it up to a dull red heat, holding it for a few seconds. So there's the finished product. So you can see here we've got a nicely tapered tang that uh, reduces the weight, gives a little better balance, saves material. The And a very slight distal taper, if, if any, on the uh, spine of the blade here. And then a consistent, pretty consistent uh, edge forged thickness at about 3.30 seconds all the way down. And all I need to do now, all I need to do now is uh, drill some holes for the bolts and a lanyard hole, and then I can go ahead and heat treat it, grind it, and finish the rest of the blade up. So that is, I tried to include sort of the, there's the finished product. I tried to include every major operation that I could in this forging process, except for straightening. Could probably do a whole video on that, um, and maybe we will at some point. But anyway, appreciate you guys watching, as always, and we'll see you on the next video.